Welcome everyone. I'm going to do a quick video here on the Z375R home maintenance kit. So this will be the oil change, spark plugs, gas filter, oil filter, and all of that. So quick um, rundown of the things I've got so far. It's my first time doing it. I've done car oil changes, but never mower. Got the oil pan um, tool to remove the spark plug. Typically use this to get the um, oil filter out when needed. And we may need this for the clips on the uh, gas filter. Here's the home maintenance kit for this model. You can go on John Deere's website and look up the kits if you need to get one. So the first thing you're going to want to do is drain the oil. Um, you'll have this oil drain pipe here. It, if you pull down, will slide out from under this clip. And we can take off this cap and drain the oil. Um, not super clear on the best way to do it because on this side it's going to get all over the tire. So I'm going to try to put a pan through here and see if I can get it to go right there. And if not already mentioned too, if you hadn't already, make sure you run the mower for a little while to get it warmed up. I'll make getting that oil out of there a little easier. So as you can see, I've just got it kind of chopped against the side here so that it can drain slowly. I'm going to be waiting on that. And while we wait on that and get it uh, completely empty, we're going to want to get ready also to pull out the oil filter. While I'm waiting on the oil to drain, we're going to go ahead and work on the plugs. They tend to be pretty quick and easy. And you're going to have two, one on each side. You're going to have one over here, and then back on the side that we're doing the oil. Right here. Basically, the process for those is you're going to have to pull this cap off, which is generally kind of snug. You can have a little slack here if you need it but you'll want to pull that off. And that's where this tool comes in handy. If you have it on a spark plug removal tool, um, you can get these at Harbor Freight, other places, but you can get that in there to lock on that spark plug and get a twist to get it removed. And then we'll go ahead and get the new plug installed. We got the old spark plug out and you can see it sitting here next to the new plug. According to the manufacturer, these things are supposed to be pre-gapped the gap's looking a little different to me here, so I took a quick peek at the book, and it shows that we're supposed to have a gap of 0 0.75, 0 0.030 inch. So I've got my gap tool here. I'm gonna at least give it a quick check, and then we'll put in the plugs. And the angle when putting this new plug in was a little tough, so I just started it by hand, and then the tool here can kind of slide around the outside of it, and then I'll just put it through here. To give it a little torque, you know, you don't need a ton for these things. There we go. We'll just give it a little, little twist to tighten it up. And that's how it's good to go. I'm still waiting for that oil to drain, so I'm going to try to keep uh, jumping on some of the other parts of this um, home service kit. And one thing I did do, as you can see, I didn't want that all the way to the side where it was getting on the on the unit, so I just kind of set the oil bottle on it in a spot that's good so that it can keep draining. So anyways, we'll do the air filter. So here, you're just gonna loosen these unscrews, and then you'll see your old air filter in here. This is what we're gonna be replacing with what's from the kit. They make this really easy. There's nothing to even like bolt or unbolt in here. So here's our old one next to the new one. And just kind of sanity check in. There's no real obvious top bottom. So going to go ahead, slide this back in over. Make sure it's locked in. And then I'll put the cover back on and tighten up those thumb screws. And again, while we're waiting on the oil to finish draining, I'm going to go ahead and get started on the gasoline filter. So I just popped it out of this little clip right here to give me a little room to work. And then you'll want to use some needle nose pliers to grab this little pinch. So I can get you focused here. Grab your little pinch and slide that back. So you'll just grab that with your needle nose, slide it back, and then we can pull this off. I've got an old t-shirt down here to capture some of this gas. Once I get that out, I'll show you the next step. All right, so into digging into this in the service manual a little further, I went ahead and pulled that off of both sides. Um, pretty important because you're gonna be swapping out the whole filter. Um, if you'll notice, the original filter had a little bit of a different style and there's an arrow of which way the fuel is coming. So it's coming from the tank and going toward the engine. Um, when you put in your new filter, you're gonna wanna also look for the arrow on it. 
Um, new filter's a little bit of a different style, but again, if you can see the arrow there, we want to install it in the same um, orientation as the original filter. And then just make sure, you know, you push the two back on real good and snug and then pinch those clamps back on there. Um, I'm going to get busy on that and then I'll show you the finished product. New gas filter is installed. Make sure you push these tubes up and then snug these clamps up good and tight on each side. If you need a little more room to work, there's an additional clamp here that I had to just pull this tube out of so that I could have a little room to get those clamps good and tight. All right, so now that those are on, well, we've so far got the spark plug done on this side. We've got our fuel filter. We completed the uh, air filter. The oil is done draining on this side. So I'm gonna go ahead and put that drain tube back away. So again, you just kind of screw this cap back onto the top of it and then clip it back in its spot. So I'm gonna do that and then we'll jump on the next step. The cap is on and then we're just gonna slide that back into place. Uh, make sure, snag your rag, just want to swipe up anything excess on that. And while I'm on this side, before I continue with the old change, I'm going to go ahead and knock out this plug so that I've got both of those done. And then we're going to go over and we're going to get the uh, oil filter off, get the new one on, and then we'll fill the oil up over here. And again, whenever you're possible, try to wipe down as much of this stuff as you can so no dirt and grime gets into your system. So like any job, it's inevitable that we run, run into some headaches along the way. On this side, the spark plug angle to get the tool in is just too steep to actually get it started. And I don't have another, another one of these tools that, you know, that are shorter. So what we're gonna have to do in the meantime, I'm just gonna take out these few bolts here and remove this panel so that I got enough room to get in there. So I will hop back in on the recording if there's anything that jumps out as being particularly uh, difficult. Otherwise, I'm gonna do that and get that spark plug out. All right, I was able to pull off that piece, so now I'm gonna go ahead and get the spark plug removal tool in there. Get the torque to get it off. Okay, now she's loosened up and I can get her out. Again, I'll check the gap. The last one ended up being 0.3 according to the spec, so I'm going to check this next one as well before I put it in. Uh, if you don't have a gap tool, they're pretty cheap at any auto parts store. Um, but just double check them before you put them in. And then let's get this new one installed. Then we'll move back over to getting that oil change done. Okay, got that new plug in. Again, I started it by hand and then just finished it off with the actual spark plug tool. And just give it kind of a gentle crank you don't want to over crank anything but the good part about starting it by hand is you make sure you don't accidentally cross that it thread it and strip it out so then when you push these back on give them a good hard push you'll hear a snap that way you know they're in place and then now i'll just get this panel put back on and then we'll move back along to the uh, oil change all right so the oil filter on this is right behind the fuel filter um, you'll see it here um, what you can try to do initially just clean it up, see if you can get a kind of a grip on it to get it started. Often they're pretty snug, so that's where I'll use this tool to kind of clamp and at least just give it a, a twist and a start. Um, then I'm gonna go ahead and shove this um, little t-shirt under there and we're gonna pull that filter off. They do make an um, alternative tool that's a little cap that goes on the outside of this with a, um, a ratchet you can use to get these started but um, this did the trick, at least enough to get a couple turns on it to get it um, started and broke loose. Also keep in mind, you know, if the seat's in your way, you can just push it up out of your way to give you a little more room to work here. So now that that filter is broke loose, I'm just gonna shove this under there to capture some of that, and then we'll get this oil filter spun loose. messy part for sure. All right, so old oil filter out. So new oil filter, um, we'll just grab a teeny bit of oil from the inside of the new core here, and we'll just seal off that ring, give it a little oil there. Also, I like to check the surface where the new one is going, and if need be, give this little ring here a good wipe. That way you make sure it makes a good seal when we put the new one on. So I'm gonna Go ahead and wipe this down, put a little oil on the ring of that new filter, and then just hand tighten this as good as you can. This doesn't need to be cranked overly tight. All right, new oil filters in. I wiped up 
decent chunk of the oil that came out. That's kind of the messy part. There's still some I can see back in here in places. And obviously we'll do what we can to clean up some of this, but it's gonna be not a uh, easy to get to all that. Um, but once that's on, take a quick peek in the manual. You'll see that it's supposed to have 1.9 liters or two quarts. It's more or less what they give us. So we'll get started by adding it. What I would do is um, we're gonna add you know, a whole bottle and maybe three quarters of a second, and then we'll start checking the oil dipstick here. Um, this is also where you will need a filter or something to start putting your oil in. Um, I brought a couple, that one's gonna be too big, so I brought a, another one, but yeah, let's go ahead and get that oil added, and then we'll check it along the way. And then once we feel like it's a pretty good spot on the dipstick, at least at the low mark, um, we'll wanna crank her up see where she is and then add more oil if needed put a little less than the second quart in check the dipstick and it was a little high but um fired her up she cranked up good and ran it for a little bit and then checked the dipstick again after turning it off and it was just about right where it needed to be so basically i used a little less than the two quarts um and that seemed to be the right right amount so what you should end up with at the end is your two empties which will put the old oil back in these bottles and we could take it to an auto store to get rid of that oil. The old oil filter, the old fuel filter, old spark plugs, and air filter. So that's what you should end up with at the end. Um, let me know if you have any questions along the way. Please drop them in the comments. Otherwise, I hope this um, video helps. I've seen some other similar model mowers, but none exactly this model. So I wanted to get something out there to help everybody out that has a similar model.